you know, I did the show. It was cool. It was certain things I ain't really care for. And, uh, you know, I had I, I made him give me a walkaway contract. Yo, Trump. You f***ed this party up. You didn't do your... Walkaway contract? Explain. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. <laughs> I want to ask you about, uh, is it Black Ink? Yeah. I want to ask you about your your participation in that. Mm -hmm. Like, how was it? How did you even get linked with that whole situation? What time do you um got the party started? Pardon? What time do you got the party started? Honestly, the crazy part, like, um, this one I come back from uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. I had my little brother. He come in town. He was in, he was in Houston, so he come in town. Like, I wasn't tattooing. I stopped tattooing. Cause I was up there with Pete. I was up there for like five years. And uh, I come back and I'm doing other stuff. So I, I got my other stuff going on. So my little brother came in town. I'm like, look, you have my shop. Like go tattoo. And uh, he start hashtagging, you know, hashtagging black, black tattoo, New Orleans tattoos or whatever. And somebody from casting called him, right? So they hit him up like, look, we coming in. We, we, we about to start the new black ink. We gonna do the New Orleans. We looking for artists, uh, you know, such and such. We well, from Black Ink, so he come to me, he said, look, bro, this Black Ink on the phone. I think you should talk to him. I told him I ain't read it, but I want to introduce him to you. So I get on the phone with him, and uh, I'm telling him who I was, and they like, wait, you such and such, this you, you was with P? Oh, we've been looking for you. We've been hearing about you because we've been asking all the people who like urban tattoo artists from New Orleans, so everybody kept telling them about me. So they're like, yeah, um, you know, we want to link up with you. So I talked to him for like, like two months before filming and all that, before anything was going on. And uh, we were just keeping in contact, telling me about the show and all that, and I'm just telling them what I'm trying to accomplish and, you know what I'm saying, on the show, for the show, for me to agree to do it. And, uh, you know, I did the show. It was cool. It was certain things I ain't really care for. And, uh, you know, I had I made them give me a walkaway contract. Yo, Trump. You f***ed this party up. You didn't do your walk away contract explain so i didn't have no ties like they they they, they want to lock you in for that at least 10 years for the show and i i come from contracts i come from doing movies i was signed i was so i'm like nah i'm good on that like i'm reading my contract and i'm not i'm not with this 10 years 10 years Damn. they want to and they want to everything you put out they wanted something from it so it's like it was complicated it's like bro look y'all ain't making it i already got stuff going on i already got i'm doing shit already so y'all not about to take no money from that so we really got to sit down and break this contract down so they try to give me the contract the day before because when i go and play they think i'm younger than what i am and i'm quiet because I, I, I observe what's going on to see if you're trying to play me and you know that was one of the moves so i called them like look i'm good so i turned them down like five times and then they finally it had Caesar hit me up. I met with him. He like, look, dog, like I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, director on here, and like whatever you want, like I got you. Like ain't we ain't gonna make sure nothing crazy go on. I'm like I bet, but I want to walk away contract until I see a few episodes and see how this go, and then I revisit that. But you know, it was a lot of just stuff going on, and it, the show didn't really last. So I was able to walk away. Big red wow. Rocks. Walk away without no attachments. No attachments. Yeah. We had somebody smart. else that's who smart. was on Black King that we interviewed. No, that too. was that, that girl. I told him about that girl. Mm -hmm. I can't remember her name, but man, she would. It wasn't on Black King. She was dealing with white folks. Mm. Yeah, she you was like, not dealing yeah. with you. Know what I'm saying, yeah, it was, it was white. Ten years, <laughs> <laughs> ten years a long country. Oh, no, that's big red records, man. That's raping you records. Oh man, man I gotta ask you about uh, Mac, man. We gotta talk about Mac. I can't come over here and not talk about Mac. Mac. Yeah, that's the homie, man. Like, like Mac is a. Uh, we interviewed Mac, and Mac was so humble and just a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and you know the one thing I can say about him is. He talked about, you know, just, you know, coming up so early, you know, with Gregory D and all those different with Manny Fresh mm -hmm. and then right. ending up, you know what I mean, having to just boom, get taken away like that. But I mean, but to be a guy who everybody say didn't do it. Right. And then to go through what he went through and still be as stern and, and as player and as, hu you know, humble as he is. Right. Facts. I think that's live, man. Because oh, yeah, I really right. think, you know, me, I'm a different different level. I think, you know, the true gangster is taking care of your family and kids. I'm being right, real. right, right. Uh, all that other stuff, something different. For us. But to see him reunite with his family right. and come back, 
Yeah, he went through a lot, man. For I remove all his knives, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. Like, Mac, Mac is the first. And I tell Mac this every time. From a young nigga that was in them streets, and I heard Cash Money and No Limit, and they had me on, out my mind on some gangster shit, but Mac gave you a conscience. You feel wow. me? Yeah. yeah. He taught you through his music. You feel me? And Mac, Mac said that. Mac said he like he a lyricist. He like like lyrics. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, that's a and fact. And I think that's something that details who he is and gives him a standoffish way of being not like everybody else. Right, right. For real. Right. That's why I was honored to get his twenty five shell twenty fifth year anniversary for Shell Shock. Like we got that coming up on a July twenty first. But that's hard. I, I'm honored to do that for the homie. Like that's I'm hard. like, bro. Let me let, let me get you a twenty fifth anniversary. That's, I, he was I like, let's it. do it. You feel me? He ain't even, like you said. He he like him too. They don't be. They don't ask no questions. You hear me? I'd be glad they don't hit me with the contract. <laughs> <laughs> I would get mad and start him with the contract. They'd be like, "Let's do it." I'd be it's like, like hey, "Bro, it's all love." You call me. I just was about to start a, a movie. I said, "Look, my birthday and everything." I said, "Fuck it, I ain't going nowhere." Come on, let's that's do it. That's hard, man. That's let's just. A, but that's, that's loyalty. Dog. That's oh, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, different, so, man. Yeah, man. So, I mean, you really like when you think about just what what New Orleans represent to the culture, man. I gotta say thank y'all, man. I always mm -hmm. interview a lot of New Orleans people, man. man thank you. I rock yeah, with y'all, man. Ever since I did this podcast, I, I already I'm from right by New Orleans. I'm not New Orleans, but Louisiana. I know y'all think it's different. <laughs> um, on you niggas, man. It's I his can, own place. It has parishes and all. It's his it own is, spot. Yeah, it's yeah. Different. It's different. How, what do you think about KLC? When I got to throw his name up. Oh, the drum man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about KLC, man? When it comes down to, to the sound and the way yeah, he, he got that original New Orleans yeah. sound, he one of the pioneers of that sound. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. he one of the pioneers of that sound. Thanks, so Manny Fresh, Manny Fresh came with that bounce, man. Yeah, when he it, is listen, the pioneer man. of the sound. <laughs> listen, man, be the hot one. I got one that take it and bend, break it down, shake it down right. with me and a right. friend. He is the sound. Oh, that Orleans. nigga, that, that nigga stupid. You can't put that yeah, nigga behind yeah, no beat machine. You ever seen like a bouncy to the truck? Down and let bite your butt. Special on Manny Fresh. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That educated me so it. much. Man, yeah, you should go see it. To show you how bounce music started, huh. Fresh. Oh, I didn't crazy. know Fresh started it. Street DJ in New Orleans, and his performances was crazy. I remember my dad used to come home with DJ of the year trophy. I knew he was a part yeah. of the that beginning. Right. I didn't know he started it. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. And that's a bad man to take that, and, and that's our sound. Man. What did you, when you first discovered his music and his beats, what did, where were you at and what did you think about the movement and what was the biggest impact of his music? Man, that, that New Orleans music was, you didn't listen to nothing else. Like, mm -hmm. you listen to NWA, New Orleans music, because our music scene was on Smash. Like, the world knew the hot boys, but see, UNLV with Man and Fresh, man, that was something different. Mm. That's where BG coming in the game Interest as a he's a he's a kid coming under UNLV, you feel me? Like man, that was hard. Man, that was the landscape of New mm -hmm. Orleans. And you talking about from that third world? You would have thought Manny Fresh was from the third world. Be How you a cat from downtown around all them uptown niggas, and you give them the sound that is uptown, but he from downtown. Mm. Man, I remember all them songs Lil Wayne did, man. That shit was crazy, man. For real. That boy was handling it, man. He was handling them, man. That ain't nothing like that, bro. One mm. person, all them albums. Ain't nothing like that, Every album bro. sounded different. Like, Juvie album didn't sound like a BG album. Didn't sound like a Lil Wayne album. Right. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So he really did his dog this one. That, that cast wanted to run. crazy. I had a question. So, um, how important is Peach's Records to the culture? That's a staple. Oh, that, yeah. To hear every rapper say they got a... They start at Peaches. Like, Mia was working at mm -hmm. Peaches. Mac coming from Peaches. Like BG was there. BG. Like, everybody That's coming crazy. from that. That was a staple mm -hmm. in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And it's still there now. It's still yeah, there. for sure, for sure. It's history. It is history it is for history nice. for history. I love the story. I do too. I've been I've been fascinated by it. When, I mean, I was like, it's, it's a jewel. I'm like, don't touch it. You got to be careful how you deal with it. I look at stuff different. No, I know. It's good. You have the, you have the right eye because... This store was built with the help of our people, you know, mm -hmm. because it's like if you can visualize the, the caterpillar going to the cocoon, mm. and this is what came out of our people, you know, this mm -hmm. is like the local painters are here, the local candle makers, the local jewelers, you know, 
all the local people get a chance to have their stuff in here. Yeah. Man, Shout I out Mr. Ronnie. Mr. Ronnie. Ronnie. We interviewed her. Oh, yeah? No, I ain't seen it. We interviewed her. Go check it out. We were in her shop. I ain't playing no game. You're cutting up, huh? You're cutting up. You heard me? We got to give you the key to the city. Look at you now. I just showed up to the You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? You got to give me the key to the city. You heard me? And we already done it through the music. Now we got to do it through the sources of media to make media. them understand. Mm -hmm. We going to make y'all see what we doing. And you doing a great job Man. with that. Like, I'm for trying the guesses my damn that you break, right. You yeah. <laughs> see I mean? You doing a great job. Yeah. You're giving that perspective of what it is, that, what this culture mean. And like you say, you and G, y'all be speaking facts. Y'all don't just speak feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.